you really need to check out. You want a great coffee table book? This is the answer right here. Well, thanks so much. So explain the book, The Grassroots Baseball, Where Legend Begins. And there's just phenomenal photos throughout the book. So thanks so much. Uh, my, well, as I was shooting Major League Baseball and professional baseball for my job, I always took time to shoot the amateur game, the grassroots game. And this is a collection of those images, 15 chapters around the world, eight in the U.S., seven outside the U.S., and each chapter opens with a legend, a Hall of Famer who tells his story about growing up, his early years of playing baseball from that region. Guys like Ricky Henderson here. Oh. Uh, in Oakland, um, Cal Ripken Jr. for Aberdeen, who also wrote the introduction. Um, to, uh, we've got uh, uh, for the Dominican Republic, Vladimir Guerrero, and for Puerto Rico, Padre Rodriguez, and Ichiro Suzuki, not a Hall of Famer yet from uh, Japan. I'm going out on a limb, Gene. Yeah. He will be a Hall yeah, of Famer. I, yeah. I think I'm, so. I'm going yeah. a hunch. Yeah. yeah. And uh, a special chapter of Mobile, Alabama with Hank Aaron, who tells a wonderful story of growing up there, playing baseball during a very difficult time. And just wonderful stories, just fun stories. Ricky's story is incredibly entertaining, <laughs> as you can only imagine. Um, Ricky and, entertaining? Yeah. I can't just picture a that. Bit, yeah. Aaron Judge, a liner to left, and the Yankees have a leadoff single here in the sixth. So here's some pictures from your book that we have. And this is from the Oakland section, and there's Ricky Henderson. Yeah, that was the day that they uh, renamed the Ricky Henderson Field. That was a great one. And these, these photos are from Oakland Little League, the same place where Ricky played, Bushrod Little League, many years ago. And also his high school, Oakland Tech High School, is represented in this chapter. So it's just a fun, all levels of baseball throughout in New York. There's kids playing stickball. Whitey Ford opens the New York chapter and tells an incredible story of playing back in the day for Yankee Stadium and um, having enough money after the World Series to buy a ring for his wife. <laughs> just entertaining and fun stories throughout. You could buy a lot of rings at today's World Series <laughs> shares. <laughs> Dee Dee Gregorius, the batter's gene for with us here. And again, her book, if you want to pick it up, and you're going to be on hand this weekend, right? Yes, I'll be here on Sunday uh, from 11 to 1 at Gate D signing books. Um, so you can author sign copy. All the proceeds are going to the Oakland A's Community Foundation. That's awesome. Uh, and then after that, we'll be at Section 216 outside of uh, Scheib Tavern. Foul ball off the bat of Gregorius. And what was the motivation to do this book? Where did the interest to publish something like this come from? After I was working with the Baseball Hall of Fame, I was a traveling photographer for four years. And as I worked there, I got to know the Hall of Famers and hear their stories. I thought how great it would be to pair these images that really no one's seen, all these amateur baseball images, and pair them with these Hall of Famers. And their stories are just so incredible. I mean, Tony Perez, like leaving Cuba, and coming to the United States for the first time. Uh, Hensley Mullins, the first baseball player, the first Major League Baseball player from Curacao, and his incredible story. And th it's just there's so many, um, you know, that people haven't heard the younger days of these Hall of Famers. And then photos of the kids just giving them hope and saying, you know, you really can be from any place and make it to the Major Leagues and all the way to the Hall of Fame. Do you have a favorite memory or a story from when you're putting this book together? Uh, I have quite a few of them. <laughs> We'll wait, we have plenty of time while we wait for this fly ball <laughs> yes. to come down. Yeah it, was, yeah, it was a very long one. There we go. <laughs> uh, I, I'd say the Hank, Hank Aaron, the Mobile, Alabama chapter is one of my favorites. Was there's so, I mean, there's five Hall of Famers from Mobile, Alabama. And this, Alabama. it's a cultural uh, chapter of the book. It really just shows what was there before, what's there now. And Hank Aaron's story is really just... It's so special and what he had to overcome and the height of racism and playing for the Mobile Black Bears and then, you know, into the major leagues. Um, it's just a very special story and a lot of photos, and, and including his childhood house is, is in the chapter. And there's uh, four high schools from Mobile, Alabama, uh, four high school baseball teams that posed on his, on his childhood house for this uh, shot. It's, uh, it's pretty special. Lena Batter, Gio Urshela is up. What about the uh, the Sunday for the celebration of the anniversary, the 30th anniversary of the the A's winning in 1989? You have a special date. 
Is that supposed to be told? Well, no, I'm... I'm uh oh <laughs> you, you breaking news here, Ray? <laughs> well, I mean, these players are coming in. It's going to be nice for them to see this book. You know, that would be nice. Yeah, so, yeah, the, so all the players yeah. who are coming in are getting a copy of the book. So that is that is correct. So I, I, did, I didn't want to bring He's that. spilled the beans, Ray. That's okay. Maybe <laughs> we can't tell you fine. a secret. We can't take it's you coming anywhere. Your way. That's right. I mean, that, they should be proud to get that because it's, you know, the Ricky Henderson field. But, yeah, it's pretty special that... Uh, but the players are going to benefit from that. Juan Marichal, you know, yeah. for uh, uh, the San Francisco Giants, he tells a great story. He represents the Caribbean Series uh, chapter, which is just fun. And, and baseball looks different in different places, and that's what this book is about. I mean, it doesn't look the same when you're in Cuba and you're in the Dominican Republic or you're in Texas or Mobile, Alabama or Cape Cod League. It's, you know, culture is different. Baseball looks different in Japan, as we all know. Yeah. So. Um, I'm excited, you know, for, to share the book and for people to see it, and um, hopefully people will come by on Sunday. What was the response from people like Ricky, like Vlad Guerrero, Hank Aaron, when you approached them about this? Well, uh, Ricky was the first one I approached. It was spring training two years ago, and I told him my idea and what I'd like to do, and he went right into a story of <laughs> Bushrod Little League, and he said, I didn't really want to play baseball. I wanted to play football. I wanted to be a football sure. player. I wanted to play for the Oakland Raiders. He said, my mother pushed me to play baseball, <laughs> That's right. and she had the coach come to my house and pick me up so that I would go and play Little League, and he said, in the back seat of the car, waiting for me, was a glazed donut and a hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so how fun. And he said, OK, I'll play baseball with glazed donut and a hot chocolate each time. So that was his early. That's uh, all it took. That was all the motivation he needed. I think it started with that. And I think he got some money for home runs after a while. Yeah. So he, yeah, he definitely uh, uh, <laughs> tells entertaining stories. And of course, uh, Oakland Tech, where he met his wife, Pam, and she kept score. I know she, she kept stats for football. And that's how the two of them connected. So it's. Uh, well, he could have been an athlete in any sport that he wanted to play. Very he could true. still play. I think the Raiders could still use him. Well, <laughs> <laughs> not in the field tonight. They allegedly were playing on because there was issues north of the border where the Raiders were trying to play. Ricky was upset. He didn't see his number of uh, Mount Davis that they, they took the tarps down for the weekend series and. Uh, I keep telling him to take the number down and put it on your back and play again. You can still come back and make oh. it, you know. Well, he's got yeah. two numbers he could, they could put up there, know, right? 24 yeah. and 35. Yeah, yeah, he could come back and play. Gary Sanchez, a fly ball to center. Mark Canna coming in. Gene, thank you so much. Again, Sunday, they can find you where? Up, uh, section um, 217 during the game and before the game, uh, gate D. Awesome book. Pick yep. it up, please. It is a great reader, great looking book for your coffee table. A is a 5-1 lead to the home sixth.